everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and I'm back for another of the 13 days of Halloween where I teach you a different holiday painting step by step in acrylic on canvas. Today's painting is the spooky specter in candle lighting. This is actually a lot of pretty easy painting. It's a lot of fun. I think you'll be surprised at how accessible the techniques, color mixes, and all of that is. I'm going to explain every part of it. You can be a brand new painter and accomplish this painting. To help me do that on the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to make sure that when I'm explaining a technique, breaking down a color mix, anything, any part of this painting, that one of our robotic cameras is actually pointed at it and zoomed in because what you can see, you can paint along with at home. And I really am going to be explaining this to you. I am going to break down how to draw him in, but if you check the description below, there's some extra important information. There's a link to the traceable, and I'll let you know when you could use that if you don't want to do the step-by-step -step drawing. Um... It's actually pretty simplistic, so either is either is fun. What happened there? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. And we're going to be very You're serious. Huh? You're being haunted. Ooh. I'm being haunted. We're going to be very serious this entire art lesson. This is serious art lesson. This, this is serious art Serious. Lesson. We're going to be really serious about this fun painting. We're not going to have a great time at all. Yes, we are. We're going to have a great time. So there's really nothing for you to do, but check that description. It's also going to tell you the materials and everything else you need to know. So get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at the easel. We're going to paint this together. Woo! Woo! So for today's class, I have an 11 by 14 on my easel. And on the palette, I have the following colors. I have cad red, cad yellow, yellow ochre, Mars black, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, titanium white. This here is a product called Satin Glazing Liquid. It slows down the drying time on my paint and allows me to do transparent glazes. I really like it. Um, and I've got a dry day today, so I'm going to be using it to <laughs> dry my studio today. And then I've got some titanium white in fluid acrylic. I may use that for some little delicate details. It's a really optional one for this lesson because you can thin down your heavy bodied white with water to get a thinner consistency. And when we need it, we'll talk about it a little bit more. All right, when we come back, I'm going to show you the first step. So the first step, I'm sure many of you have guessed, is paint the canvas black. Um, you might not know that if you're very, very new here, but if you've been here a minute, you could, you could see this coming. I'm going to use my tube and I'm going to write a funny word and get some paint on my canvas so I can paint it black. You can just put paint on the regular way. This is just a silly thing I do and it's fun for our short videos. Now, when we paint the canvas black, a tip that I will give you is to consider drying it and doing two coats so you have a nice matte black. This is just water and a mister bottle. That's all it is. And then I'm going to take a number, a one inch oval mop, I'm get it a little wet, drag off the extra water, and just paint this whole canvas black. That's what we're going to do, paint the whole canvas black. But again, I do think uh, with these solid black canvases, this particular one, we don't have so much layered over it that it wouldn't be a benefit to paint the canvas black twice. Oh, yeah, just give it a couple layers. Yeah, especially if you're painting a more economical paint. I'm painting um, Senna Acrylique, which is a really old professional line of paint, and it has a lot of pigment in the paint, so I get away with a ton of stuff with it. But we might not be using the same materials, and that's okay. We just need to know what to do if we're having different paint problems. That's it. Like, you can be painting with craft paint, right? And maybe it doesn't have like the matte black that I have here, but two coats of it will do pretty close. Sure. I'm just really picking up the paint where I squeezed it out, making sure my whole canvas is covered. It's a very, very dark paint. It is very, very dark. It's a good place to start for spooky painting. For the spooky painting. For the spooky painting. I'm just brushing back and forth, making sure that the paint is totally on my canvas, that I don't have pops of white coming through, and that I have a solid, solid black. Now, what we're going to want to do before the next step is to dry this thoroughly. Here's a couple tips. I think it's a better idea to put your hair dryer on the cool setting when you're drying if you're using a hair dryer, or just allow it to air dry. And if you're painting along with me during the drying segments, you push pause on me while you dry your painting. And then when you're done drying your painting, you push play on 
me and that keeps us painting together. All right, I'll see you when your painting is dry. So this is the step where you'd use the traceable if you're not going to draw along with me and you just use the transfer method to put that on your canvas. But if you're sketching this out today, we're going to start in the center and create kind of a nice little, little bump as that is the face of our ghost. And then we're going to bring a little spread of wing out here. These are sort of like ghostly arms. Kind of out like this. And, ooh, and then I'm going to bring down a little bit of a blow. And that will be kind of the direction that this is blowing by. Now I'm going to turn this slightly to an angle because I have trouble doing an ellipse. I need an angle to get my lips. I'm going to draw a nice little ellipse under him so that I can put candles in a circle under the ground around him. So you don't have to have the most perfect ellipse in the world. You just want to know where your ellipse is going. I can see the chalk like at one angle, but not at all angles. It's so weird. But I'll be able to get it out there. I kind of have it in my head now anyways. All right. So this step is either the traceable or you follow along and make this series of strange lines with me. Either option is completely okay. Now on the traceable, you would sketch it out more fully, right? So you have all the lines, but this is really the lines that you need to do the painting. Okay, when we come back, I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna come down here and maybe give my little ghost friend some ground to exist in. And to get the ground, I'm gonna come here and take a little bit of my cad red and my cad yellow together. The earthly plane to which he is bound. To the earthly plane to which he is bound. I agree with that very much. All right, so I'm adding a little brown to that. I'm going to come down here and make little back and forth kind of marks. These are like, can even have a little more brown in it. These are the, this is like the little grass hay that's down in the, this is a haunted barn. <laughs> I get it. It's a straw floor. Just back and forth. Takes a couple layers to get the look correct. Takes a minute to get the paint down. It's a very dark painting. It is. Well, it's a Halloween painting, so Halloween paintings Ooh, tend to have a very so dark spooky. application. So spooky. I'm going to get a little of my black on here, and I just kind of come back and blend it. See how we're doing? I do. Give it a little bit of a blend. You see it when you're... Look at it from the from different sides, it reflects the light differently, so it's not quite as Yeah, and in, in these early stages where the paint's shiny, it can be kinda hard. Just kinda adding some shadow in here. Just making sure we got a little shadow in here. Back into my brown. into my little orange here bit. We'll come up forward just some. But I want to kind of remember where my ellipse went mentally because I'll line my candles up more with this and then there'll be a little bit of straw that's lit kind of lightly coming off the canvas. A little bit of lit straw. Now I'm going to take a little uh, white and yellow ochre a highlight. Mm, 
too much highlight. I'm going to come back into my orange. <clears throat> we'll come back and add a little more straw on everything later. It's a good beginning. All right. Let's call that a step, and when we come back, I'm going to tell you what we do next. So I want to create a little kind of implied space in this kind of ethereal area. I'm going to grab a little more of my cad red and my cad yellow and make some orange. I'm back with the burnt sienna. Similar, similar color. I'm going to come here and just very lightly kind of imply some sort of wall here. Just a light dry brush. We're just just speaking a little bit about walls here and there. Just a little, little, little. A little bit of wall right here. Just paint it in. Yeah, a little bit of wall. And I'm going to, I think I'll grab a little of my, I'm going to grab, this is a three quarter inch, but you could use a one inch. I'm going to get some glazing liquid on this. This is a oval mop by Princeton in the select line. I'm going to grab some of my little orange brown here and maybe get a little darker. I'm going to just add some atmospheric perspective. That's definitely atmospheric. It's ooh, spooky atmosphere. Spooky atmosphere. No, I'm just coming behind where I know my ghost is going to be because I want it to be misty in several places. And grab a little bit of my cad yellow and my cad red. A bit of my burnt sienna. Curve strokes, just letting it curve a little bit of a stroke there. Our world is just lightly implied. Could be inside an old mansion, could yeah. be. Just brushing up and down. If you have too much of a color and you don't like how it looks, you just come back with some black and blend it in. There you go. I like that better. Kind of cascade that down as yeah. if coming down off that side the messages from the other less side. is less is more here less is much much more those messages from the other side they're becoming stronger we can we can we can see you sending your messages to us from the beyond from the beyond 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 the canvas 
Beyond the canvas. Beyond the canvas. Beyond the canvas. All right. I'm going to want to dry this. When we come back, I'm going to show you the next step in making this cute, adorable painting. All right. I'm going to kind of refine my, my little hay down here. I'm going to grab some of my burnt sienna and my Mars black together. I'm going to add some little shadows into my hay. With This is a number six Raphael sepia round. I just want a brush that's going to give me kind of sharp points. So instead of using the D'Artigny brush, the one I used before was the, um, I don't know if I announced it, it's the number eight Raphael D'Artigny brush, right? It's a hog bristle round. Um, that gives me a soft line, whereas this, the number six Raphael sepia, gives me a hard line. So that's what you're looking for in your brush bucket. What brush gives you um, a soft line? What brush gives you a hard line? I'm going to take a little bit of my cad yellow and my cad red. I haven't rinsed my brush, so it makes kind of a, a bright orange brown. Then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some white on the toe of this brush and I'm going to plant some little white flames. I'm going to have to repaint these in, but I need to know where they are and the easiest way to do it is to start with the white. And since I'm going to be coming around them with yellows and red, it doesn't hurt to have them be a little bit white to begin with. These are mystical flames. Huh. Powered by Eldritch Magic. Well, no, they'd be green then. That's true. It would be green. Maybe. Well, I don't know. Um... And my ghost should cover up this one here, but I'll put it in just in case I paint him a little bit flurrily. Just because that's how the circle would sort of go. Little little line of circle. All right, to do the next step, I need everything to be dry. So now I'm going to put some fire energy around the candles or flames. They're really flames. And I'm going to take a little bit of my cad red and my cad yellow. And on the toe of my brush, I'm going to just kind of wiggle out a bit of a glow. little light going up. And I think this will be covered up, but just in case it peeks out, I want it to have it here so that the circle feels complete. The circle of candles? Mm -hmm. That seems good. You know that you know why they do that? So you can see all around yourself. <laughs> you, you know, because if you just have a candle on one side, it just, you, you, can only, you can't, it's, you, you're always blocking some, some light from being all around. So now you have all around light. That makes it spooky. Spooky. <laughs> So 
sort of wiggle my brush up trying to make little little breaks in the light. As long as it's not breaking the wind. It's not breaking the wind, my friend. All right, then I'm going to take a little bit of yellow. And at first, come back in and yellow these up, and then we're going to come back and reflame them. I see. You get that, that, gets that super bright yellow. Mm-hmm. Just so that we have a super bright yellow in there before we come in and put in our little white. That makes sense. And the reason we also paint white first is yellow is a super transparent color and this is a very dark painting. So this is the only way to get a bright, bright yellow in here as it is. Now once the bright yellow is in, rinse out. And I'm going to go ahead and take my fluid acrylic. And the reason I'm using my fluid acrylic is I want lots of pigment and I want it just to flow from my brush to the canvas. You can take a couple drops of water and thin your heavy bodied acrylic. Um, it just will be a little less pigmented. And then you paint in a little bit of white, bright white flame. There we go. Just grabbing little bits of white. You I moved. moved. You, you moved over to the other ones and I didn't see it. Oh, oh no. <laughs> it's okay. All right, so we you put the white back in all the centers, and what we're going to want to do next is dry everything. I'm going to want to take a little bit of my cad yellow and cad red and make a nice bright kind of yellow orange. And I'm going to also add some little bright. Some little extra glowy light out here. Holding a little bit of glow underneath them. Okay, that's really all we had to do there. And now we get to come to the top of our little ghosty. And I have to decide if I want to use my number eight or my number six. I think I'm going to stay with my number eight Raphael de Artigny brush. This is a hog bristle brush. It's a round. You want one of your brushes that leaves like kind of tapered feathered edges. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my ultramarine blue and some white I get a little bit of a loose gray going and let's get some glazing liquid in here and I'm going to come off the edges of where I know I'm having my little ghost and I'm adding little curls and this is sort of a little energetically. Just a little bit around him. OK, 
because their forms are, are really loose. Then I'm going to come here and I'll take a little bit of my yellow ochre and my titanium white. Come here from the top. And just brush that down lightly. That brush is too wet. Come back in and get a drier brush. He's making too deep of a yeah a ghost. Too well, he will be that deep, but I don't want the line that solid. So I'm gonna just pick it up a bit. And while that's having a little bit of a dry, see, I'm just making sure it's kind of in the shape of him. And I'll use it as a guide later. But I just need a more airy. There we go. Just tapered. I'll go ahead and kind of bring some of it down. Dry brushy. You know, it's funny, I'm back here sipping on a kombucha. Are you? And I feel like it's kind of like a haunted drink. It's a haunted drink. Like you get the you get the the hauntings of a flavor, but not really that flavor. <laughs> so it's not it's like it, it's sort of mis misleading when they say it's watermelon, because I mean it's it's like the haunting of a watermelon. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of my Ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna, I think, and I'm going to use that actually as my base. My ghost will be a little cooler, I think, right here. And then I might take a little bit of my titanium white and my ye yellow orange and down here. Add a little bit of that glow. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Floating out there. All right, now we're going to want to dry it. When we come back, I'll show you what we do next. So I'm going to want to continue working on with my white. I've got my number eight still. I'm going to come up to the top, kind of work this in a little more solidly. Might even grab some glazing liquid because, again, this is a little more solid.
little curled marks to just show like ectoplasm that's hmm. i mean i'm just using a ghostbusters term i don't know that's what it's actually called <laughs> It well, just occurred to me. I, I just... think that ectoplasm is the corporeal form overlay between the ghost and the and the in the real world. This looks much more, um, you know. Well, you are an official we, Ghostbuster, so I would say. Hmm? I would say this is a you know more more white uh, apparition than. Hmm. Uh, ah, all right. So we're apparitioning. I, I so I'm going to come here with a very bright white, a little glazing liquid, a little white into my ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. This way I can um, up the white. Maybe add little bits of, oh, that's too much. If ever you get too much, you just come back with a little bit of well, that made nice. white and... Yeah, I, I definitely see that this falls more in that category of... You think so? Vaporous apparition. Vaporous apparition? Yeah. Well, it has been determined. I'm using glazing liquid just to help improve my flow. Lots of S-curves. I'm going to definitely do a lot of S-curves. Just building up our specter. You got to build it up. It's a... Just a little kind of flowing off. Little glazing liquid just to improve flow. It also keeps the transparencies going. Just angelic almost. Except it's not. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of white into my glazing liquid and come up to the top of the head. A little bit there. Just blending it in. <laughs> okay. Back over to my ultramarine blue burnt sienna. A little glazing liquid. Just a little bit there. Okay, for the next bit, we're going to want to definitely dry him. So now I'm going to want to add some white highlights. I'm going to take my glazing liquid and my titanium white. And I'll come here to the front of the spectral body. A lot more glazing liquid. A little more details.
little highlights where you can. Very nice. a little bit of a shape in there okay the last little bit we do need him to be fully dry so let's dry him fully and then I'll show you this little touch so now I'm going to take my round brush and a little bit of my glazing liquid you could use just water and black paint I'm going to get it right on the tip I'm going to come here and make an ellipse another little ellipse toe of the brush and then spooky specter mouth. Ooh, there we go. Ooh. That's a good spooky specter mouth. Spooky spectral skeletons. All right. And then I'm going to take a little bit of a light gray. Spooky scary skeletons. <laughs> Come on the inside of the eye with just a little bit of light gray. Another little bit right there. A little bit here. So when I come back, I'm going to take a little water and thin my black paint. I don't want it to be runny but I want it to be more that consistency. So this is what I mean. You can add water to heavy body paint and get it to be more fluid. What it changes is the amount of pigmentation that's in the, in the paint. So we should have a little, I'm going to maybe get some fluid gray. And I will improve that little outline. Okay. When you have the facial expression just how you like it, in the perfy, spooky fashion that you can, you want to find one of your small little detail brushes. This here is a number two precision. It's almost a rigor. It's a long monogram liner. I'm going to go ahead and pick a color to sign. I think I'm going to sign in this orange right here. A little bit of water so that it flows off the brush better. There we go. Little strip in the corner. Okay, when we come back, I'm going to tell you what you need to do next. Well, I hope you had fun painting the little specter with me. I had a great time. This is such a great installation in the 13 days of Halloween. So I hope that you're enjoying this whole holiday program. It's another fun holiday painting for our wall. And I love how as artists, we can just change out the wall seasonally. We'll mm -hmm. just paint them for each of the seasons and just take them up and take them down. And people will be like, oh, 
you have original art for the holiday? And you're going to be like, yes, yes, I do. I change it out seasonally. It's going to be fixed for all the seasons. So this is a really great one for the 13 days of Halloween. I hope you had as fun, as much fun as me. I would love to see yours. Hashtag the Art Sherpa on all the social media places. You can also share in my private group on Facebook. That's the Art Sherpa official. It's a closed and private group on Facebook. And uh, we approve posts we curate posts we make sure comments stay nice like we're really in there actively so it's a very safe group on facebook um at least safe emotionally (laughs) right for your feelings we try to keep it you know safe for your feelings in there and it's a great place to have a first painting or a second painting or have a question that you want to ask so i highly invite you to come join that group if you'd like to share the painting with me um outside of that i want you to be good to yourself and be good to each other and i will see you again real soon for another 13 days of Halloween. Okay, let's go.